the point. Um, I know Jaylan. I've known Jaylan since he was five, and I think he has got the right mentality. And um, as as a kid, he 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 thinks well beyond his years. Um, I'm hoping that TJ is the same. I... It's not as tough as what Joseph described. What they're doing. But it, it's it's in that sort of in the same sort of vein uh, as what Joseph went through. Um, of course, we all of these all of these systems and 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 structures are being a little bit uh, are being improved as we go along uh, all the time because obviously sending sending Joseph to to Monaco uh, kind of in an unsupported way and uh, an unsafeguarded way uh, is not is not ideal uh, and that's how it used to happen and now if that was to be repeated today there would be safeguards in place and there would be a little bit more structure and you wouldn't be going into the unknown quite so much which i think is how tj and jalen have have been have been introduced so it's better in that sense but it's a, it's a, a more real uh, experience for 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 jalen and and tj because they're having to spend this time away from home and family have they got, I mean, you might know, Kenneth, do they have an agent or do they have any correspondence or? No idea, Neil, because I don't work, as you know, I don't work with players here. Um, I think in the case of Jalen, the, there's an agent who's been doing some work for the club with some players. and he, He's based in Las Palmas. Um, and that's how it all came about. I mean, I agree with you. I mean, I know Jalen's grandfather and, and he speaks volume. I've met the boy a couple of times. And apart from his obvious talent of the, on the field, what uh, surprises me in Jalen is how mature he is for his age. He's, he's a very mature boy. So I agree with Mick. He's, he's got a very, very good chance because on the mental side, um, he seems to have blossomed. Um, in, in what Joseph said before, um, which I agree entirely in those days, um, we didn't have all these social media to keep you entertained, but also it can be a double-edged sword. Yeah? I mean, I know, I know a lot of managers uh, who, who don't like a lot the social media because it gets to the players. He was giving me a, an example of when he used to play. Um, he's my age. And when he used to play, he used to say that um, the following morning he used to be up, uh, say, on, there was a match day on a Saturday and on a Monday morning at 7 o'clock, he would be outside the local news agents to buy, buy the newspaper and see what rates in the newspaper had given him. And sure. that would condition his week. If he would get an eight or a nine, he would be flying all week in training and in the next game. If he would get a two or three, he would be a miserable guy at I home. I agree and with you there. Kind of. And nowadays, uh, he's got a problem where this, uh, he says, Kenneth, when I'm in, in, I'm in a small stadium in, in Championship or Premier League, it's okay. You go to Wembley, it's very difficult to monitor because you've got 200 square meters. That, Probably the new Spurs stadium, the same. But when you go to places like Upton Park, the Hawthorns, they're small stadiums, and they're there watching what people are saying already in social media. And they have a hell of a lot of work to do on the mental side of players nowadays. Uh, so I agree entirely with what Joseph has said, that in, in those days, I mean, I find it difficult. Look, when I started this in 2002, um, when I used to travel and spend two or three days abroad, there was nothing that I hated most than going to have dinner on my own. I literally <laughs> hated it. And I just wanted the menu to be brought all in one go. The menu to be brought, the food, order the food, get paid all in temp because it, it's very difficult to be there sitting on your own and looking around the restaurant. Nowadays, I've got social media. You can check the internet, check the different feeds and it's a bit more bearable, but it's also a double-edged sword. It's, it's a double-edged sword. So um, I think, like I said uh, yesterday, and I've, I've uh, even volunteered going to school, it's an, it's not, it's not, it cannot be done overnight. Uh, it's a process. Uh, there's a lot of education we need to do to the boys going into school, 
get in them, make, because unfortunately, and I'm not blaming the kids or the parents for that matter, eh? on the contrary, but they're just accustomed to switching on Sky Sports or watching the Instagram, seeing Ronaldo with the latest iPhone and latest headphones, and they just want to follow a dream. It's perfectly normal. We've all had it. But We've all had that dream at different levels. But we Kenneth, need to educate but, them on the process. Ken, it's something that we, we talked about um, yesterday, and I think Roy, Roy mentioned it, um, about the, the kids. I mean, for example, the kids, the kids internationally, they don't go away till they're 16 in June. Mm-hmm. Um, if they were to go away uh, under the guise of whatever you want to call it, um, selection, whatever, and they went, uh, they went further afield, maybe to Manchester, as tournaments, but as a GFA select when they were anywhere between, I don't know, 10 to 12, or let's just say 12 to 14. Surely then what you would be getting is because, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously one of my, one of my sons has, has been on a couple of these particular tournaments. So I see it when he comes back that he's changed a little bit because he goes through the diet, he goes through the monitoring, he goes through all of the things that the, 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 the GFA team would do. That then translates itself onto him as he goes through life he might lose it afterwards that i'm not saying he keeps it but it gives the kids if the kids did it earlier surely it would give them a taster of it absolutely yeah i totally agree with you that's one of the things i i said yesterday that i think we should be investing more in coaches not because our coaches are not good enough uh, it's got nothing to do with that it's that we don't know anything better so if we bring people from abroad who belong who've been former players who they're affordable, they would come here because of what we offer them, the weather, the the quality of life. Uh, We need to turn what we see as a weakness in our game, as an advantage, as an advantage to bring people here. And they will uh, educate and, 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 and instill a certain discipline, not just on the plain side, on what you just mentioned, the diets in the go. I mean, I've always said, and, and a lot of um, managers always tell me, the biggest stage which they fear in the development of a player, and uh, they, they call it the BMB stage. And the first time I heard it, I said, "What's that?" I said, "It's the birds and the bulls, age 15." And again, it's true. It's it's easy to fall into that trap. Again, we've all been there. Uh, there are some nowadays, especially the ones who are playing in Spain, who would be extremely disciplined. They don't go out. But, I mean, I don't, I, I, there's too many things. Uh, Joseph has been there, done it, seen it, got the T-shirt. Um, and he probably looks back, okay, if I would have had somebody guiding me here, uh, giving me just support, just talking like we're doing now. All that could have made the small difference in building up his stamina and holding out for an extra two months. How was it for you guys when you were younger? Did, was that an effect? The B, the B and B. Was it? Um, did you learn to cope with it, or come on? <laughs> You're not talking to me. I let, Joseph, I let Joseph answer that one. <laughs> I. I'm, I'm going to be totally honest with you. Um, I had a girlfriend. I had a girlfriend back then, but she knew what my, my dream was. Um, not only that, but uh, every time I went abroad, I mean, she, she had to she had to <laughs> make do with it. Um, and I didn't start drinking till the age of, being totally honest here, till the age of 23. That's when I started drinking. That's, a, that's, that's when I actually started. When I was in La Valona, that's when I started drinking. I used to drink on the Sundays because we used to play on Saturdays or Sundays, depends. Um, and I used to, after the game, we used to go to a karaoke bar in La Linea and we used to have a few beers and stuff like that. That's when I actually started drinking. So I, I managed to, I sacrificed myself until at the age of 23. After 23, yeah, then... And even, even at 23, it's, it's not bad, Joseph, because... Everything in modesty, you know? You've seen now, the example, I, I drink levels. Every, everything I didn't drink up to the age of 23, I'm drinking it now. So <laughs> 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 I'm using it as fuel. So <laughs> it's going well. I don't know. It was going well. 
<laughs> yeah, Mick. <laughs> but, but again, there's nothing wrong in having the odd drink at 23, 24, because the amount of pressure uh, in, I mean, you played in a highly competitive league um, and you did extremely well. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is that obviously the floodgates opened in Gibraltar, the money was good, the competition, and, and, and you came back. But at the time you, you were know, in La Valona, you were a very, you were very, a very highly rated player. And what you were... as, as you know as well, the, the, yeah. the contract I signed uh, yeah, but closed, closed many doors. Close many absolutely. doors. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's, absolutely. Look, we can talk it's, about it's, it. I had for Joseph a, a team in second division in Spain teams. who were willing, who were willing. I mean, they just got relegated from first division. And they were willing to take a risk. We had Nastic um, Aragona. Nastic, yeah. They were willing uh, to take Guada, the chance. Yeah. And Cadiz. Yeah, based, based on his age and all the rest. But unfortunately, the, the, the employment contract with, with La Valona, once we read the final detail, <laughs> uh, <laughs> was that true? And, and I remember, and the pre I, look, he passed away not, not long ago. Uh, but I remember very well trying to sit down and, and, and talk with the president and trying to see him, the benefit for everybody. Uh, and I said, come on, Alfredo, you can't stop the opportunity. These, the, if, he, if he actually makes it there, long term, it's going to be more money for, for the club. I said, no, 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 I've got Madrid and Barcelona. They're looking at him. <laughs> I looked at me and I said, look, come on, let's, be, let's not kid ourselves. Realistic. They, they may have more money, but let's be realistic. The chances of them taking uh, a punt on him are, are practically extremely low. Uh, but there was no way of getting... He was, he was tough. Uh, the thing is that in Spain and Portugal, because of employment law, you need to have a buyout clause. So that gives the club uh, the upper hand in negotiations. Assurance. The assurance, yeah. yeah. So they, 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 they we have... Come back, we come back. We now come back, Neil, to what we were speaking before. Um, back then, back then, my dad went to Kenneth, and when he went to Kenneth, it was quite late. Um, but nowadays, I mean, uh, there's there's plenty of people in Gibraltar that, that can actually help you when when dealing with contracts. Kenneth, myself, I can actually help whoever. I mean, any youngster that that wants to know anything about contracts, they can come up to me because. I've been there, I know what it is, and, and no one's going to rip me off. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I did go to some, a few people and, and, and they told me, no, this contract's binding, this contract's good, blah, blah, blah. You, know, you sign it. And I said, but it's four years. It's four years. And they said, ah, dude, don't worry. Because uh, in the UK, and it, this was an English bloke. I'm not going to mention his name. No. Um, he said, nah, don't you worry. I said, it's four years. And he said, nah, if a good club comes after you, you can leave, blah, blah, blah. So I signed. I said, well, I might as well, no? Yeah. It, was, it was, I mean, back then, La Valona was in third division, nearly getting promotion to Segunda B, which we did in the first year that I played. Yeah, you, uh, you got promoted in the first year? Yeah, yeah, we got promoted. We got yeah. promoted. I actually, I actually scored the, the winner in, in, the, in the promotion game, which after the game, I was called by Cadiz. 45 minutes after the game, I was, I was given a call directly by, by one of the, which I actually passed the call to you, Kenneth, if I... If I, if I yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but like I said, I mean, it was the lack of professionalism or the lack of knowing, no, uh, what what you're signing, what you know, what you're doing. Uh, but nowadays, I mean, you, nowadays, I mean, you can get agents or, or or actually people who know about this and help you in an instant. So, um, in a way, yes, Joseph. But if somebody, if nobody else had come in for you, you'd sign anything just to get. Uh, a, a, a step on the ladder, wouldn't you? Let's be honest. Yes. I would have. I would have. I mean, I mean, I, I, I was going to sign it, but I went to this to these people and I asked them. I said, "Do you think this is this is good?" And they said, "Yeah, of course." I mean, back then I was what seventeen and a half, turning eighteen. The yeah. the money was very good. <laughs> I'm not going to argue. Um, and yeah, I, I was going to go to uni to study, but I decided to take that road. Um, and I'm, I, I mean, I would have liked to go to uni to study, but I look back and, I, and I'm You did the right for, thing, full stop. I'm happy for what I did, you know what I mean? I'm Absolutely, happy. Absolutely, you, did, you, did, you did the right thing. The person yeah. I am today, thanks to my parents, obviously, who, who were there all the time and, and, and gave me the discipline they gave me, but 
I changed a lot whilst I played in football. Eh? I changed a lot, a lot. Mm. Um, mentally, discipline-wise, physically, everything. I mean, I used to take it. That's, that's, that's why I'm saying right now, I used to take it to another level. I used to train three times a day. I used to train early in the morning with my team. I used to train lunchtime with my, my um, fitness coach of uh, my team, which was in La Valona. Um, Juan Carlos, his name, his name was Juan Carlos. Um, and then I used to train in the afternoon again with my team. So I was one of those players who, who was straight on to, to, to trying to become a, a professional. Um, but I, I, I must say, man, I, I, I enjoyed the route. Um, I look back and I, I can't really... There's ups and downs. There's always going to be ups and downs, but... You, I'm happy you did. With what I you did. did the right things, and and and, and that's you, you cannot punish yourself because whichever way it went. Also, Neil, another problem we have is that unfortunately, and it's a fact of life, um, there are some horrible people out there in the football industry who who prey on people's dreams, um, and it's very very difficult to pick them out. But it, it, let's be honest, in the second and the third divisions, it's cutthroat, isn't it? I mean, maybe when you get a bit further up the ladder, I mean, it's still cutthroat, but you're still earning Still cutthroat, but yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you get parents who, who are desperate and they, they, want, they want to put the tools to their children and, and they're just ruthless people who just prey on them. We've seen a couple of them landing in Gibraltar, promising here, uh, basically the world to some people and, and even the other way around, trying to attract people, uh, showing the, the promise, oh, you sign for my team in Gibraltar and you're going to play uh, in the Champions League. Well, technically, yes, you're right, but your team is struggling at the bottom of the table, so no, there's no right. chance you're going to make it. And, and they, get them, they get them to pay a couple of grand. Uh, the dad will say, okay, for a couple of grand, I'll risk it. When he gets 10 people doing there, they've called them out of 20 grand. So Shame. that is another, another problem that we have. But um, look, like I said, um, like Mick said, the, the, the raw product of the Gibraltarian player is no different to the English and the Spanish. Um, it's just taking him and guiding him. And, and like I mentioned yesterday, no, it's... The example of when you want, when you're age 12 or 13, and you want to be a lawyer or a doctor, you don't get thrown into the courtroom the next day. You're given a pathway over four or five years. Football is the same; it's not rocket science. But we need to give them the the platform because they deserve it. You're going to tell me that Joseph goes into Bayside, say in September, and sits down with a with a group of elites, 13, 14 year olds. And they're not going to learn just by him sitting there and talking the potential pitfalls, what happened to him when he was at Cambridge. When he, of course they're going to learn. And they're going to come out better persons and will help them. These are the things that we need to take advantage. Mm -hmm.